With you, Mark White. So how did you guys come become uh, from the sixpence, which is so cute. Let me just say something. The sixpence is just very dear. It just makes you want to come, you know, Hug you. pinch your cheeks. Well, the band uh, uh, prior to changing its name to the Strawberry Alarm Clock was called the Sixpence. Uh, we were T-H-E-E. Ready. Yeah, T-H-E-E. D. 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 The real English way. Uh, we were ready to put out a record on the all-American label, our manager's own independent label, uh, very rare back in those days. But uh, what happened was we were um, needing to come up with uh, a new name. So, um, so you went to Mick Jagger and he said, I gave you a strawberry alarm clock. And yeah. About the same no, time. It, it, no, it, 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 it wasn't at that time. Yeah. We, were, uh, we were at... Uh, we rehearsed over at my my folks place uh, in Van Nuys, California. We had a I had a guest house on the back. Nice the equipment set up was about one o'clock in the morning. We were all about half asleep, and we were trying to come up with a name for about two hours to replace the Sixpence because there was another band at the time with the same name, and we didn't want You're kidding confusion. Me. No, no. Uh, in fact, there is a band now called the Sixpence too that has has some stuff out too. But uh, that was 40 years later. But back then, uh, I had an idea. I was really in love with the Beatles song, Strawberry Fields Forever. Uh, one of my favorite uh, yeah. uh, Beatles. So I, I, I extracted the name Strawberry out of there. You're not thinking too much about it as being a fruit because it was really referring to Strawberry Fields, which was a place in England. And a place I, in your mind. Yeah, that too. And um, we couldn't, we, we were trying to match up a, a, a second word to it, strawberry this, strawberry that. We were coming up with a bunch of alarm ridiculous stuff. Alarm yeah. No, and what happened, the room was really quiet, and I had this old alarm clock, it was electric, and, and, and of course it was, uh, I probably knocked it down onto the hard floor about 50 times, and the, and the face, the, the crystal part of the front was broken, and the second hand would go around and would scrape on the face of the clock, and it was completely quiet in the room, and, it, and the second hand started going, and every time it did that, you know, it would like break the silence in the room. And finally, Lee Freeman, uh, one of the guys, man, and myself looked at each other, and simultaneously we went, alarm clock. Yeah. You know, and then the next thing we went, <laughs> strawberry alarm clock, strawberry alarm clock. And the next yeah. day, we went to Uni Records and said, our new name is the strawberry alarm clock. And we were sitting there, you know, with our eyes closed, getting ready for them to cringe. And they went, hmm. Uh, strawberry alarm clock. Nice. Mm, okay, yeah, we, yeah, that's good. We like it. We like it. And and then they put out incense of peppermints under the strawberry alarm clock. That's yeah. beautiful. Well, from uh, prunes to strawberries and now bananas, we've got the uh, <laughs> great banana hoax. Is that that segue? Very cool. The great very, banana hoax. Very professional is, uh, of you. Thank you. Yes, good segue. Good segue. <laughs> now, Mark White. Um, Yes, Rachel. Speaking of, of devices situations, actually, can you move in on the mic a little, my friend? I'm moving. Okay. Um, we, uh, I know the people out there want to know about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, and that uh, that appearance happened just after you had actually left the band. Am I right? That is correct. Um, the band, uh, for whatever reasons I won't go into right now, kind of broke up around uh, the end of '70. Mm -hmm. And factioned off, and our bass player and our drummer left. We fired our manager, and uh, uh, at that point, uh, the band was Lee Freeman, Ed King, Gene Gunnels came back as the drummer. Uh, he was the original drummer in Sense of Peppermints. Right. Uh, and uh, there was a new member of the band. His name is Paul Marshall. Um, he's he uh, was more into into uh, folk rock and brought a little different sound into the band, and it kind of went off in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, uh, that movie, um, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, the band was asked to write three songs, um, and they appeared in the movie. Uh, unfortunately, I missed that. I made, I made it in Psych Out, the movie, but I didn't make it through. Uh, right. I just quit the band, and uh, so the Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, the, uh, the Strawberry Alarm Club, wrote did not this, have a keyboard player. Did not have a keyboard player. Wow. I felt the least good about that. They didn't. They, they knew they couldn't replace me. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, At least I they didn't have some other one in there. That. Yeah. That would anyway, be bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, they went as four guys, and uh, they wrote three songs, and. Um, I think you're going to be playing one of them. I'm going to play one of them here. now. I'm going to play I'm Coming Home. Right. It had a, it had a uh, 
went off in a little different, more of a folk rock direction. I'll let uh, I'll let the uh, listeners out there um, make their own uh, own judgments. Uh, judgment on you. That. Yeah. I mean, not you, but right. No, you can you can kind of hear the fact that uh, it was not influenced by me in any way. Right. Uh, I love how you're distancing yourself. No yourself. judgment going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No judgment. Right. There are a lot of people out there who are fans of the of the soundtrack um, that Stu Phillips was involved in, and, and you guys, obviously, well, not you guys, in, but in, those guys. Those guys. Okay. In fact, recently. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. so a lot of people want to, the people want to hear it. So I'm going to play I'm Coming Home, Strawberry Alarmcock from the Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Right, sweet baby, your voice rings in my ear. It's a trilogy. There's uh, people say, well, "What does black butter mean?" Yeah. A lot of the guys in the band were um, living in the in the uh, same house together, and one night uh, they were they were hungry, and they opened the refrigerator up, and there was nothing in the refrigerator to eat, except there was this butter dish, and you know it was the kind that's covered, and you can't see what's in it. You know there's butter in it. And he lifted it up, and the butter was so old that it kind of turned yeah, black. So, weird. so anyway, they wrote this song called Black Butter. I know it sounds kind of gross, but. It's, uh, <laughs> But it, it really has nothing to do with the song, but uh, that's where that title came from. But uh, I thought song. it was pretty appropriate. Uh, we, we, we really um, tried to make a, a story out of the whole thing, and uh, Lee Freeman was very instrumental in the lyrics on that song. We all added our musical um, ideas, and we came up with that. Uh, the last section of that, uh, of Black Butter, uh, we do some a cappella singing there in harmony. Uh, which we, our vocal coach, Howard Davis, which is responsible for our four-part harmony throughout uh, most of our careers. Uh, he, uh, unfortunately, God bless him, has passed away uh, quite a few years back, but uh, he was instrumental in, in uh, teaching us uh, really good, tight four-part harmony. Which is really important to elevate what you guys are doing, or what you guys were doing um, at the time to have that sort of, I mean, harmonies were so big, you really had to be on, on your game to compete with um, with the other harmony heavy bands. Yeah, there. his influence really uh, uh, helped sculpt the, the sound of the of the band. He was really into those really lush, thick yeah. 40s and 50s harmony. He, he was a tremendous piano player. Um, he actually worked in one of those uh, those piano bars. Uh, it was, I think it was up in Montrose, California, and uh, our manager, man, and he says, "Hey, how would you like to, uh, you know, uh, arrange uh, some vocal stuff for our, this band I have?" And that's how Howard Davis got involved with us. And he was at all our sessions, and he really worked us. And he was a extremely great guy, excellent piano player. Although yeah. he never played on any of our songs, but uh, one of the songs you did play tonight, uh, "Nightmare Percussion," that was Howard Davis's voice on there. Uh, he's that was the one time that he put down uh, kind of a talking vocal, that real deep, he had a very deep, he was a large man, you know, he's, and uh, so anyway, we're very grateful for him uh, helping helping us uh, yeah, over the years and coming up with those great harmonies that people uh, were always complimenting us on, and yeah. they're very difficult to reproduce nowadays. We have struggled with the harmonies. <laughs> uh, not, a lot so, of, not a lot of people yeah. can, can pull it off. Not a lot of Especially people. when we weren't all professional singers. We just still, we basically had to step up to the plate and just learn how to sing. I mean, that that's the bottom yeah. line, you know. 